Hey there everyone, this is Danielle, moving on to the third and final game in the Ace Attorney trilogy, Trials and Tribulations. Uh, as I mentioned in the previous video, I will be going on to Apollo Justice, Dual Destiny, Spirit of Justice. Um, I may not be able to do that on the Switch, because currently they've only released this trilogy on the Switch. Um, but I'll use a different version if I need to. So this will be continuing despite the playlist being called Ace Attorney Trilogy. But that won't be for a while because this game is probably the longest. It has five cases. Um, I'm not sure if the first game is longer because the bonus case in that game is really, really long. Um, this one is certainly the best of the trilogy. So you're going to enjoy that. <laughs> anyway, let's just r jump right into the first case. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. Heck yeah. And yeah, the, the art for the cases in this game is really good. It looks awesome. Anyway, let's go. Yes! <laughs> How did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. Y you're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. D don't talk about her like, like that. <gasps> it, it wasn't me. I, I d didn't. <gasps> I didn't do it. <laughs> yep. Five years earlier, Mia Fey, second trial. April 11th, 9.40 a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. <sighs> it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Ah, uh, hemp. Mm-hmm. How do you do that? Ah, uh, hem! <laughs> oh, Mr. Grossberg. Good morning. Ah, uh, Mia. Please calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicious behavior, you know. What are you talking about? I am relaxed, Mr. Grossberg. Look at me, I'm relaxed. Uh, let go of my lapels. Hmm. You obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. I, uh, I'm so sorry. It's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grossberg, am at your service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprised me. What, with your early request last night? There shouldn't be a earnest, earnest request last night, sorry. There shouldn't be a comma there after what, that threw me off. Let me handle this case, you suddenly said, and quite forcefully, too. I just found out yesterday. About the case, I mean. What? And you've already learned all the relevant facts? Well, about that. You see, I mean, of course I have. I think. Oh dear. In any case, don't let our client see you're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. <coughs> Good morning there, everybody. Good morning. Try to keep smiling, Mia. I, uh, I just want to say, I'll give it all I've got. Yep, it'll be fine. No prob. <coughs> oh, what's wrong? Do you have a cold or something, Mr. Rye? Uh, actually, it's right. Like the Flying Brothers. People screw up all the time. And yes, I have a cold. That's what this mask is for. My doc says this way I won't give it to anyone else. 
Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you are truly innocent, I promise I will save you. Please, let go of my shirt. <coughs> That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mio. My name is Mia Fey. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. First time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and, well, here I am again. But this time, this time I'm going to win. For my client. And for myself. April 11, 10am, District Court, courtroom number 2. So yeah, the way they make this a tutorial case is that Mia just hasn't been in court for a year and she needs some stuff explained, basically. Oddly enough, she doesn't need things explained in her actual first case, which is weird. Anyway. <laughs> Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. Prosecution is ready, Your Honor. The defense today is... Ms... Ms... Mia Fey, was it? Y yes Your Honor. Is there a problem? I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be leading the defense. Yes, well, you see... Mr. Grossberg had a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But... Isn't that him standing there right next to you? Yes, well... You... You're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Of course, Your Honor. I think. Hmm... Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Well, well, well. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Don't worry, little girl. It will be all over soon. Ugh. Gross. Payne, I don't like you. I am gonna kick your ass. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Hmm, it sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken at the scene of the crime. Students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. They found the victim's body and the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway. They then called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The court accepts this photo into the record as evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. Yes, there will be more crime photos. <laughs> Spoilers! <laughs> By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> Your reputation for sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. The truth is that this victim died a rather unusual death. An unusual death? What do you mean, Mr. Payne? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question. Huh? A simple question. I thought I might loosen you up a bit. I am a genteelman, if you will. Um, a what? Stand up to him, Mia. Show him what you're made of. Ah, perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause. Go on. Please say you at least know this much. Uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, I didn't get a chance to read through the whole file. Uh, my hemorrhoids are beginning to act up. Now, see here. The details of the case are filed under the court record. But you knew that already, didn't you? Ah, the court record. I think I can see that by press. I, I think I can see that by pressing the R button. All of the weapons we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Y yes, sir. I'll do just that. I've got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The 
court record. Okay, let's take a look. I just pressed the R button here, or the ZR button, which I prefer to press, because it's a much larger and more cool button. <laughs> and yeah, we, look, we can look here. Cause of death was a fatal electric shock. There you go. Now then, would the attorney for the defense please answer the question? What was the cause of death? It was electrocution. According to the court record, it was fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm, but how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer to that will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. I forget what Payne's voice was, so I'm just doing something. <laughs> but before that, there is one more vital issue. What's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? W what do you mean? Oopsie. Terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston... That's Winston Payne for you. He is one smooth operator, if you catch my drift. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. I, I think they probably do, like, he's not very good as a lawyer. <laughs> now then, let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the victim and the defendant? And this time I would like to see some supporting evidence. E evidence? No need to get all worked up over this. As I said, all our weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and then shove it into old Greybeard's face. I yes sir, into old Greybeard's face. Uh, Mr. Grossberg, try to set a better example for the young lady. Here, evidence isn't the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence with the R button, so be sure to go over it all. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Okay, it's a profile, which is why they mentioned that. We've looked at the profiles here. We have uh, Marvin, he's not relevant. Uh, we have Phoenix Wright, he's not relevant. I mean, he is, but he's not the cause of the bad blood. Nor is Doug Swallow. Uh, nor is Winston Payne. This lady here is the problem. Phoenix Wright's girlfriend dated the victim Doug Swallow up until eight months ago. Yeah. Phoenix is dating Doug's ex. Yeah. <laughs> the reason for the blab bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Ms. Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But up until about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. Clearly she has some part to play in this story. Oh, she does. Hmm. Ah, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like- He's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne. Please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? It's fine. After all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court calls Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. Witness, please state your name and occupation. Oh, uh, yes, my name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, um, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect? No, no, he means what did you do before you were arrested? You were arrested. <laughs> oh! <coughs> I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you were suspected in the death of your fellow student, Doug Swap. But, but I didn't do it. I'm innocent, I tell you. I'm telling you I was- Achoo! Achoo! <coughs> Would the defendant please refrain from passing on his cold to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Hmm. Well then, Mr. Wright? Please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor. The victim and I. Um, I... I mean, I was there. 
but I'm not a killer. All I did was find his body. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. I never even talked to that stuck-up British wannabe. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim? Right, like I said, I'm not a killer. Whew, looks like the judge understand. Right, it looks like the judge understands. Mm. You're being... You're being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> it seems that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be? This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? I can't believe Mia forgot what cross-examination is. Like, that's her whole job. <laughs> He's right, and it's the defense's duty to carry out cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness's testimony contains any contradictions. Contradictions? If a witness is lying, their statements will conflict with the court record. But Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client in court, all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty, you see. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just now? That there was a lie? A contradiction? Now then, your cross-examination, if you please, Ms. Fay. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you haven't been lying. You wouldn't do that to me. Would you? Okay, so there are in fact some lies in this cross-examination. Um... See, the problem is... How did Phoenix know that Doug was a stuck-up British wannabe without talking to him? This doesn't make sense. Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Th that's right, I mean, why would I even... But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck-up British wannabe? Achoo! Well, Mr. Riot? Ah, uh, no, it wasn't me. I'm not a killer, I swear. Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Y yes well... He was always walking around with a big huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. Okay, uh, the problem here, we can now present some evidence, is if we look at this photo, we can see Doug is not wearing something with a Union Jack on the back of it. By the way, the Union Jack is the flag of, of like Britain or England or something. It's, it's, you know, it's a British thing. Pretty recognisable. Anyway. Objection. Objection! Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? I yeah, I'm sure. It was right there on his back. Ms. Fay, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honour, please take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute, he's wearing a leather jacket. The Union Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression you accidentally came across the body. But if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You'd have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me. Please forgive me. <laughs> Mia, you've made our client cry. Let him. That peony just doesn't stand for Phoenix anyways. What does it stand for? <laughs> I can't believe I trusted him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. Thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh-oh. Did I go too far? By the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? I, uh, um, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over-the-counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. 
Hey, wait a second. How do you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it? Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your cold medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the crime scene. <gasps> What's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's Cold Killer X. Yes, but even I've got a bottle of Cold Killer X in my apartment. Attention! I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that argument won't work. There's no doubt as to who this bottle of Cold Killer X belongs to, especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints are all over it. W what? <gasps> Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow must have picked up the bottle of medicine, dropped by Mr. Wright, and hid it in his hand. His purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his killer as Phoenix Wright. <gasps> order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I'd like to present this photo and bottle as evidence. Very well. The court will accept them into the record. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. Cold killer X added to the court record. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broken. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electri electricity passed through it. Well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Ugh. This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks, my poor, poor hemorrhoids. Ugh. Marvin, please don't tell us these things. Gross. <laughs> what really happened? The truth is... I went because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 2.45 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then at around 3 we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I had been taking Cold Killer X for the last 2 or 3 days, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different from the testimony you gave previously. Achoo! 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 I I'm sorry, Your Honor. I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. <laughs> okay. You'll forgive me if I say I hardly find your current testimony any more credible. Hmm. Miss Faye, please begin your cross-examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. What really happened? Alright, so... What we want to do is have a look here at the timing of the thing, I believe, because they met at 2.45, right? Uh, we know the date and time of death was at 3pm. If we look at the exact time, we can look here and see it's about 3.05, actually, because of where the second hand is pointing. Not second, minute hand, not second hand. The court doesn't have a second hand. <laughs> yeah, you can see it's about 3.05, right? And then at around 3 they split up, then later when I went back, I think I need to press a bit first to get the exact information I need. So what was it you were talking about? You know, a shoot. <coughs> that maybe we should hang out again sometime. Hang out again sometime? I wish that were true. So you say you went back? Um, yeah, that's when I found the body. Yes, but why did you go back in the first place? Weren't you angry with him? Well, th that's right, I was. Then why, Mr. Wright, why did you go back there? Um, I thought maybe we could make up. Achoo! 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 Judging by the atmosphere, I'm pretty sure no one is buying this. I do think I need to press a bit more to find the right spot. I don't super remember. Was it Mr. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, and we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? 
Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the Alchemist of IBU. An Alchemist, I see. I gotta admit it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It was filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. Oh, how fascinating. He sounds like he was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for some more details? Yeah, this is important. I need to know a lot of this stuff. About pharmacology department. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said the department uses strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. That's right, and they sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables? Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. The high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. So yeah, these cables are very important, um, given that the victim died of an electric shock. Uh, but we also need to know a bit more about the timing, I believe. So I'm just going to fast forward back to the question. Boop. So you were absolutely certain that you met at 2.45? Yeah, pretty sure. That's the time class ends. But they're always doing experiments, so it doesn't matter much. Experiments? Yeah, those pharmacology guys are always in the lab whipping up something. Well, it looks like he's right about the time anyway. Witness, let's go on with your testimony. Uh, I think maybe if I fast forward this, there might be another clue. Uh, let's see. No, that's the same as before. I can't quite remember what I'm supposed to do in this one. <laughs> Had you ever met the victim before then? No, never. But that day he called me up and told me he wanted to talk about Dolly. And this Dolly person is? My, um, it's kind of embarrassing. She's my, um, sweetheart. <sighs> what? What was that for, Mia? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like slapping something all of a sudden. Yeah, Mia does not like Dahlia. Dahlia Hawthorne was also the lover of the murder victim, Doug Swallow. Before she met Mr. Wright, that is. Hmm, so it was one of those nasty love triangles, I see. Uh, press that. I think I just need to press everything first, probably. It's rather unusual to catch a cold this time of the year, isn't it? Yeah, you always get a little careless when the weather starts to warm up. I guess I shouldn't sleep with the window open this early in spring, huh? I suppose common sense is not always common. So, did anyone else know that you were taking cold medicine? Well, I always took one after meals, so I'm pretty sure all my friends knew about it. On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly, just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Mmm, her mini omelettes are magically delicious. <laughs> Yowch! Why did you punch me in the jaw? Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Mia, I love you. <laughs> I think that's enough for now. So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death, and then the defendant returned to the scene for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the medicine bottle either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. W what do you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for a little girl. <laughs> However, there is one mystery that still remains. There is, Your Honor? How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is... I... you are correct, Your Honor. 
Hmm, so how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done, maybe I could still come out of this mess smelling like a rose. This is actually pretty easy. Like, if you look at the evidence we have so far, in particular this, you can see directly above him there's this sparking electrical cable. Kinda obvious. <laughs> Your Honor. I yes, Miss Faye? I believe that if we were to piece together everything we've heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. Th that would be most impressive. <laughs> Quite the brash statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes? An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm. Of course I knew that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Oh, Mia, I love you. <laughs> what dork. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. By a photograph. <laughs> As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture captures it quite well. What? But there is nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Come on, it's right there. It's really obvious. <laughs> hmm, I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Uh, it's here. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's, that's, what is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard. The machines the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. So then the high voltage cable... Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely, likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well... I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The Defendant. Achoo! Hmm, that much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. Irrefutable proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. Y you do? Well, what is it? His fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the medicine bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Ah, y you mean? Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent on murder, he squarely pushed the victim towards the severed electrical cable. Order, 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 that's enough. I think we can conclude that there is no reason to continue with its cross-examination. Stick a fork in us, we're done. M Mr. Grossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie, the show is over, Mia. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. N no you're wrong! Mr. Wright is innocent. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Y your Honor! At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Do you have something further to add, Miss Faye? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? You still haven't told us the truth, the whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict. But, but I, I can't, I, I just can't say it. If I told you what really happened, then I'd be... It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. 
Miss Faye. No matter what it is you have to say, I believe in you and I'll represent you to the very end. We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. <coughs> Wait a minute. Mr. Wright. I... I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright. There's no need for further... <coughs> I, I... I... I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My f fault that D Doug Swallow is dead. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's none of your business. I'm telling you for your, for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's going to be bad news. Y you're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it. D don't talk about her like that. Yeah. What you just said, was that the truth? Y yes, I, I was afraid, afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. P please, please give me one more chance to explain. This time I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I, I believe in you. Oh, um, thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Ugh. Feels like my hemorrhoids are doing the Harlem Shake. Gross. When I pushed the victim, witness testimony. That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he was just lying there, d dead. Well, the explanation is really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm, a simple explanation indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. Wet from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. B but when I pushed him, there weren't any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Hmm. Miss Faye? Let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? Y yes Your Honor. Don't give up, Mayor. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of ev kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. When I pushed the victim. So what kinds of things did Mr. Swallow say to you? He said all sorts of terrible things about Dolly. He said that she was a bad girl. Um, is that all? Yup. Well, Miss Faye, you heard him yourself. Oh boy, you're not doing yourself any favours here, Mr. Wright. Please don't make this harder for me than it already is. Anyway, after he said that, I just... I just... Can you tell me about what happened in a little more detail? That guy, he just said what he wanted to say to me. And then he put on the jacket he was holding and started to leave. That's when... That's when I lost my temper and flew into a furious frenzy. I just gave him a light, gentle shove to the chest. It's weird that the scene they're in looks completely different to the actual crime scene in that flashback there. 
and when you did that, there was no severed cable anywhere to be seen. Right, there was nothing like that at all. But is it possible that you merely overlooked it? Well, I guess it's possible. What are you doing? Don't let that guy steamroll over you like cheap asphalt. I believe what's important here is the moment the push occurred. Let's continue on with the testimony, witness. See, the thing is, if Phoenix accidentally pushed Doug into a power line, that would be manslaughter. Like, that's not murder. But I don't think they know about manslaughter in this game, so... Same dealio. <sighs> Granted, Phoenix did not push Doug into a power line, that should be obvious at this point, but... <sighs> a loud noise? And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. Y you're not qualified to decide that. What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. This sound is very important, so we're going to ask for some more details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a sharp crack. Aha! Could it... could it have been... Yes? Could it have been... Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. He fell right on top of it, and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, huh? And did that umbrella, be umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail. Kind of like the owner. Then again, I wish I had any kind of umbrella. I was totally soaked to the bone. Hmm. Miss Faye? What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well... This is it, Mia. New information you've been waiting for. Of course it's important. No, this cheap umbrella is, umbrella is more than important. It's vital. I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. <laughs> How perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for a flimsy lawyer. The court agrees to the defense's request. Witness, please add the bit about the chief umbrella to your testimony. After I shoved him, he, he fell down on top of his chief umbrella. So here's the thing. If he fell on top of his chief umbrella, and he was dead at the time, How did his umbrella get all the way over there? Addiction! Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that, I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. W what do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. Y you're absolutely right. The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No. Order, order, order! The victim, he moved? Mr. Payne, the umbrella in this photo, where is it now? W well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present his evidence immediately. Umbrella added to the court record. The, the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind. According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. <laughs> but I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. <laughs> no. I must say, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. 
Phoenix's testimony added to the court record. Well done, Mia. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to think I could establish guilt through cross-examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess. You have another witness. Exactly. And this witness's testimony will be incontrovertible. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean... Dolly? I do, Your Honour. The defendant's very own lover is a witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Bad news? You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia, what do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20 minute recess. Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. April 11, 11.52 AM, District Court, Defendant Lobby, number three. Miss Fay, I'm sorry about what happened back there. I, I, it's all right. At least you told us the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy, you can't be serious after hiding such important facts. But, but the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me, I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She, she's the love of my life, that's why. The love of your life, huh? Would you mind telling me more about you and Ms. Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dolly and I, we first met about eight months ago, right here in this very courthouse. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. Anyway, one day, she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. That's why I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here, take a look at this. She gave this to me the day we met as a symbol of our love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then... She took it off, but before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a present, I see. This darling little bottle is filled with memories of my darling little dolly. It certainly is a little... Oh, it certainly is a little bottle, all right. Makes me so happy. I show it to everyone I meet. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Dahlia's... Oops, sorry. Dahlia's present borrowed from Phoenix Wright. Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating? Yeah, but she's so shy. Every time I see her, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a present back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dahlia Hawthorne eight months ago, it would happen to have been on August 27th, would it? Huh? I yeah, it was. But how did you... This happened on August 27th. This happened, sorry. This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's this? A newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murder in the courthouse? M murder What are you reading there? Let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is some connection between these two cases. Am I correct? Newspaper clipping added to the court record. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grossberg. I... I need to finish this myself. Ah, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look in the downstairs reading room and see what else I can find. Thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, it looks like a recess is about over. We better all get moving. 
I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. To be continued. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, we continue with this case. I'll save on file 3, I suppose. There we go. There we go. We got a file for each game now. Very exciting. <laughs> anyway, that's it for this video.